turn me back But I got to make this journey
Our scripture reading by Miss Jada Davis. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to <coughs> I would like to thank God for letting us all be able to make it here this morning. And I ask that you please protect everyone as we go through church service. Amen. the Lord we just pray yes Lord I thank you he helped me all day Lord yes Lord we love him <laughs> yeah we love him and we love you Lord I thank the Lord he awake me today Lord and gave, and gave me got up Lord today to come to church Lord his house Lord yes I'm glad I'm here Lord yes Lord Yes, Lord, I, I, I pray he prays for me. <laughs> he he loves he love all of us, Lord. He loves us to be good, Lord. Be good at school and for all of us, Lord. Be thankful for, be thankful for, for him, what he do, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thankful for, for y'all here, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray 
I praise thee, Lord. Um, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love thee, Lord. Help me today, Lord. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here, Lord. I'm glad you're here for me, Lord. Thank you keep me safe at the house, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We will go to school tomorrow, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord on me at school, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank the Lord you doing things for me, Lord. I'm very thankful for that, Lord. What you always do, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> verse 1 and 2. He that dwells in the secret place of the highest shall abide, uh, abide under the shadow, sh- shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress, my God in Him. I'm thankful for the Lord bringing me here. Testimonies. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. My soul says yes.
yes, yes, Lord, to your will, to your way. Come on and open up your mouth and give God a yes in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a yes in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Totally surrender to God in this place on this morning. Allow him to have his way in your life. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way in the lives of your people. Hallelujah. Touch them even now, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. God, we thank you. We magnify your name, God. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. No matter what we go through, God, we know that you are able. No matter what you allow to come in our lives, oh God, we know that you have all power. Oh God, and we ask that there's no shortage in you, God, but you empower us, oh God, that you strengthen our faith, oh God, that you help us, oh God, that you give us a mind, God, to hunger and thirst after you, oh God. Oh God, we pray that you have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Oh God, free today, oh God. Free the ones that's in bondage, oh God. Touch the mind, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Refresh the spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen the weak, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you glory today, oh God. Oh, we don't take you for granted, oh God. You're welcome in this place, oh God. You're welcome in this place, oh God. You're welcome in this place, oh God. You're welcome in this house, oh God. You're welcome in our temples, oh God. From the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way in this service, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we want to be real saints, oh God. Sanctify us tomorrow, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory today. We give you honor today. Oh, it's already yours, oh God. But it's our obligation to give it to you, oh God. It's our responsibility to let you know how much we love you, how much we're grateful for you, how thankful we are. Oh God, we love you today. Oh God, we love you today. We love you for every way that you made. We love you for how you touched our bodies. We love you for how you saved us, how you delivered us, and how you filled us with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Oh God, have your way in this place, oh God. In every word that's spoken, oh God. Oh God, you know what we need, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, oh, all the adoration, every hallelujah, every thank you, Jesus. It belongs to you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Now come on and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise in this place. Oh God, an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. 
an awesome God deserves an awesome praise. A God that makes ways out of no ways deserves a radical praise. A God that helps us to overcome, he deserves a praise that's going to help us overcome. A God that causes us to be more than conquerors. He deserves a praise that shows the devil that I am a conqueror. A God that causes us to triumph. He deserves a praise that shows that I am a victor. That I'm not a loser. No God that I'm a winner. That I'm not a loser. Come on and give God the praise that he deserves. Come on and give God a praise that matches who he is. Don't give him a praise that matches how you feel. But give him a praise that matches who he is. I don't always feel like praising God. But he's still worthy of our praise. I don't always think that I can do it. But through God I can give him what he deserves. Come on and press in his presence. Come on and press in. Hallelujah. Come on and press in. Come on and press in. Hallelujah. Come on and press in. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. You deserve our praise. He deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know that nothing happens without God. Hallelujah. Nothing happens without God. And God, what God wants is a yes. Hallelujah. That's all he wants from us. He just wants us to surrender. He don't want us to figure it out. Hallelujah. He don't want us to try to feel our way through. Hallelujah. He just wants us to trust him. <laughs> Glory to God. He just wants us to trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just wants us to trust him. Hallelujah. When we finally realize that all he wants from us is, his, is us to trust him. Hallelujah. We'll find ourselves. We won't be so stressed out. We won't be so worried about stuff. We won't be sick either. Hallelujah. Because we won't be worried. We won't be stressed. We won't be affecting this natural body because we'll be trusting in the Lord. And the Bible tells us that all of our help comes from him. So why are we wasting our time looking at everything else? We're supposed to be having our eyes focused on God. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be looking towards the hill from which cometh our help because all of our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God and under the Lord for our pastor and first lady on this morning. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Thank God for my own beautiful wife to all the saints of God, the deacon brothers, missionaries. Amen. Now give yourself a hand clap of praise. Amen. Because it's Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We know what we live, what time we living in, but you didn't let the devil keep you at the house. Hallelujah. You picked yourself up, dust yourself off, washed your face, got clean, put your clothes on, pressed your way all the way to the house of God and it'll be the shame for you to go through all that and get here and not get what you need from the Lord. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord. I ask if you would pray with me. We're going to Psalm 73. Amen. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3 and then we're going to skip down to verse 28 for your hearing. Psalm 73. Amen. Psalm 73. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, Psalm 73, verses 1 through 3, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well not slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now that 28 verse in Psalm 73, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And the word of God is blessed. And today we're going to preach from the thought, what you look for determines what you see. What you look for determines what you see. And we must realize that our perspective is important when it comes to our walk with Christ. A perspective is a point of view or a, the capacity to view things in their realness or their true relations, relative importance. Your perspective basically is the way you see something. 
And the problem that confronted this psalmist was that he was looking at his situation from the wrong perspective. Now, how many times are we guilty of doing this same thing? There are times when bad things come into our life and we have to go through trials and tribulations. And when this happens, we get caught up in only what we can see. But there is always more than the, to the picture than what we can see. And the psalmist teaches us how to get our eyes off our circumstances and put them on God. In Psalm 73, in that first verse, we see this says, Truly God is good to Israel, even such as are of a clean heart. And we see Asaph, he learned about God. He learned about the goodness of God and how God blesses his people and God blesses the clean heart. But the problem was, at this point, he was looking at things from the human perspective. He was looking at things with a carnal eye. Now, what Asaph had experienced had him looking at the wrong things. Asaph had learned the truth about God, but what he had experienced in his life seemed to contradict the things that he had learned about God. And this brought him to a place where he got himself confused. He didn't, he got to the point where he had started doubting God. And the problem for Asaph is the same problem that we face from time to time. We misunderstand the goodness of God. We often think that goodness always has to convert into a blessing. But we should ask Job about this logic and see how he feel about that. Because do you think what Job went through was fun? Do you think he enjoyed losing everything he had no but in the end he had been brought closer to God and he was blessed for his faithfulness for years I was thinking about this the other day for years we've heard a health and a wealth gospel because we believe now people believe and been led to believe that if they just live the right kind of lives and they do the right things then it obligates God to bless them and give them stuff and give them houses give them money give them a husband give them a wife but sometimes God allow things in our lives that are, that are meant to break us. Sometimes God allow things in our lives that are going to be hard. He'll put a load on our shoulders that will eventually break us down. At this point, uh, when we find ourselves here in our lives, it's something that none of us want to go through. Uh, but we have to get to the point where we realize if God allow us to be broken, then it must was necessary. Uh, can I get some help up in here this morning? Because don't none of us want to go through trials. Uh, don't none of us want to lose stuff. Uh, don't none of us want to cry. Don't none of us want to feel pain. But I got to remember if I'm feeling pain right now, it's because God want me to feel it. Uh, if God wants me to cry, it's because God wants me to cry. Because at the end of this, I'm going to be closer to him. At the end of what I'm going through, I'm going to be having a better relationship with him. You know if you are married in this place, if you go through something with your husband, if you go through something with your wife, and when y'all come out on the other side, you're closer than when you was when you first went through, huh? Can I get some help up in here? Some of us have been through some stuff huh, where it wasn't nobody but God to bring us out of it. Huh? Oh, but when we came out on the other side, huh, oh, you can't take the relationship that I got with him now. Huh? You might have could have told me some lies about him before, huh? but now I've had an experience with him. Huh? I know how he can keep me. Huh? I know how he can bring me out. Huh? I know how he can save me. Huh? Why? Because I've experienced life with him him. Huh? He was a man of his word. Huh? Can I get some help up in here? Uh, but what we forget is huh, in this life what we're living right now huh, we can never forget that he's trying to make us into the image uh, of himself huh? and we gotta realize huh, that God is molding us huh? and when it mold clay when you mold clay it takes a whole lot of squeezing huh? you can't sit the clay down and just expect it to mold itself huh? can I preach up in here huh? but when we're going through we have to realize that it takes a whole 
whole lot of squeezing. Uh, and so the ASAP learned the truth about God. Uh, but what he learned did not go with what he experienced in the real world. Uh, as a result he was confused about some things uh, and if you look in the psalm you'll see that it bothered Asap uh, that the wicked prospered while it looked like the children of God went without uh, he seen the wicked live their lives in sin and it looked like to him that when they died they had all the peace in the world uh, and because they lived the lives they do it seemed like God uh, just wasn't showing up he wasn't doing nothing to them he wasn't punishing them uh, he wasn't standing against them and it seemed like they just was walking around filled with pride before God like we can do what we want to do live how we want to live and we going to heaven anyhow uh, and it seemed like the ASAP that the evil folks just making it they just got it going on uh, and when ASAP took all of this in it caused him to come, become bitter in his heart uh, because he started looking at the life he was living for God uh, and he looked at his own trials and his own pain and his own sorrow uh, in Psalm 73 verse 16 it says when I thought to know this uh, it was too painful for me uh, so he looked at the life that he was living for God and it got him to the point where it was too painful for him. It broke his heart. Yet he was afraid to admit how he felt because he didn't want to lead the others down the same path that he was already on. So when Asaph saw these things, he felt like quitting on God. He felt like giving up. He felt like he had actually wasted his time serving God. And if we be real in this place today, we've all done been to this point where we looked at our situation, looked at the things around us, and we've asked ourselves, is it really worth it? Is it really worth me living holy if I got to lose my family? Is it really it worth me living holy if I gotta lose my job if I gotta lose my house my material things is it really worth it for me to live holy sanctified and separate myself from the people that I care about the most but the problem with that is when we look at it we're looking at it from a carnal perspective uh, because when the trials of life begin to pile up on us, uh, we are tempted to think that we would have been better off uh, still living in the world. Uh, can I get some help up in here? Uh, and then we get to thinking that there really ain't no benefit in the serving God. Uh, because it seemed like when I start living holy, uh, that's when everything start going crazy. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, I couldn't tell that my kids was acting crazy. Uh, why? Because my perspective was in the wrong spot. Uh, why? Because before you got saved you were just as crazy as your kids can I preach up in here but now since you got a holy perspective now since you got a spiritual perspective you can't allow yourself to start looking at things with a human perspective you can't start back looking at things with a carnal frame of mind because things don't look like what they used to look like when you start looking at things through God's eyes can I preach up in here because what looks the same in possible in your eye all things are possible if we simply believe and trust God say yes to God uh, and the problem when looking at this is uh, is because it's viewed from a human perspective uh, and when we look at life and its problems from a carnal perspective uh, we have always find the attention put on ourselves uh, even when we worried about everybody else uh, but when you're thinking and you're looking for stuff with a carnal eye uh, the attention is always on you uh, you're always thinking how it's going to affect me uh, what problem am I going to face if I make this decision Decision. Uh, who will ever care if I ever come out of this? Uh, oh, yes, God. Uh, but if you allow yourself to look at life from a carnal perspective like ASAP, you'll find yourself in a place where you begin to doubt what you already know uh, it's about true about God uh, and that's where the devil wants us to be. Uh, oh, God, all of us have had experience with God. 
Say yes to God. All of us know God to be a healer. All of us know God to be a deliverer. All of us know God to be a God that can set free. We've seen him raise the dead. We know he can touch the mind. We know he can heal from cancer and all manner of disease. But why when we find ourselves in this spot? We can believe God for everybody else. But it's time to start believing God for ourselves. Say yes to God. The devil has slipped in this kind of mentality to make us believe that we are selfish if we start asking God for stuff for ourselves. Can I preach up in here? But why are we looking at everybody else who needs to be delivered? We need deliverance ourselves because we're still looking at the world from a carnal perspective. We can't be delivered from fear because we're praying for everybody else. Say yes to God. The Bible does say ha, to pray for other people. Ha, but you can't forget that I got something that I need from God too. Ha, so I got to call out to God for myself. Ha, and I need God to help me. Ha, to help my focus. Ha, to help me keep my perspective in the right spot. Ha, say yes to God. Ha, I can't get caught up looking at the world. Ha, and everything that's going on around me. Ha, but God, I need you ha, to help me. Ha, say yes to God yes God ha, and what the devil want us to forget ha, is the ability of the God that we serve ha, because if we look at the world from a carnal perspective ha, carnality has nothing to do with God ha, say yes to God ha, carnality has everything to do with facts ha, say yes to God ha, but the one thing about facts ha, is they don't always line up with God ha, can I preach up in here? Huh? There's a difference between facts and truth. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? The facts say you might die, huh? but the truth is God said by his stripes huh? I am healed. Huh? The facts say that I may lose my job, huh? but the truth said that my God shall supply huh? all my needs. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? So I can't look at it from a corner perspective, huh? but I gotta keep a spiritual lie. Huh? The fact said that they won't get saved. Huh? But the truth is God said whosoever huh, shall call on the name of the Lord huh, shall be saved. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? So we got to have huh, a spiritual perspective. Yes God. So we at the point where ASAP then he looks and he's looking at everything from a carnal perspective. Huh? He see the wick, the wicked is successful. Huh? It seems like they have peace. Huh? It seems like they got it going on. Huh? Even he went even to the point where when they died, huh? it seemed like they got peace when they died. Huh? And they lived a life that was wicked before God. Huh? They had their chest stuck out. Huh? And he seen all of this because that's what he was looking for. Huh? Can I preach? up in here but beginning in verse 17 the mood of this psalm begins to change he says until I went into the sanctuary of God then I understood therein. Oh, it's something about when you understand what's really going on. It's something about when you start understanding what God really got going on in this world. When you realize that God is who he say he is. So Asap then in this verse you can see he begins to shift. His perspective begins to looking at things from looking at things with a carnal perspective. And he start looking at things with a spiritual perspective. And by reading the psalm, it looks like he took a trip to the temple. And when he got to the temple, he said the Bible lets us know that he had a conversation with God. Say yes to God. But the important thing about this uh, is that Asap went to the temple uh, and he had a conversation with God. Uh, but in the psalm, you can see that God spoke back to him. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and he told him uh, he was able to get his eyes off himself uh, and the problems that he had going on. Uh, and when you realize at the beginning of this psalm, uh, it was a lot of things that Asap was confused about. Uh, but when you get to verse 17 huh? he came to realize that the wicked may have the best here huh? that they may live it up and enjoy life huh? they may have their chest stuck out right now huh? but at the end hell will be their home 
say yes to God and I'm here to encourage every single one of us in here today before we allow ourselves to become jealous of the lives that the wicked are living we got to remember that this is the only heaven that they going to know and all of the people that are passing away around us we still got to remember the fact that everybody ain't going to heaven can I preach up in here yes it's sad that we lose loved ones yes it's sad that we lose people that we know but we as saints of God have to remember that somehow I got to make it to heaven somehow I got to make it to see Jesus somehow I got to press through because I know that living holy is going to work out for me living holy is the only way I'm going to make it say yes to God yes Lord they make fun of us now but why are you talking about living holy I'm going to enjoy the holiness of God if I keep my perspective in the right place say yes to God now ASAP even gets to the point where he confesses the fact that he's been looking at everything from the wrong point of view now you can't just overlook that because it's hard sometimes to realize that that you the problem huh? say yes to God huh? it's easy to cast my problems on everybody huh? we can talk about the job we can talk about the bosses huh? we can talk about our husbands we can talk about our wives huh? we can talk about our family and community huh? but at the end of the day things are going to change huh? unless we change ourselves huh? and we allow God to fix us huh? allow God to help us huh? say yes to God Yes, God. So when he gets to this point and he realizes he's been looking at things from the wrong point of view, he starts to deal with his own heart. There are many of us who have to admit that we looked at life the wrong way. And instead of trusting God and believing in his word, we've been guilty of looking at our circumstances and doubting the word of God. And instead of doubting the word of God, we all need to come to a place where we just take God at his word say yes to God uh, and all of us have had experience with him uh, so it's crazy for us uh, when we find ourselves in a trial uh, to forget about the one who brought us out of all the other trials uh, say yes to God uh, the thing to me that makes sense uh, is that if I find myself in trouble uh, I ain't gonna call somebody that ain't never been there for me uh, say yes to God uh, but that's what we find ourselves doing uh, depending on the circumstance uh, we try to call on people who we think can hurt in this help in this moment. Huh? But God has proven to us huh? that he's brought us out of many things. Huh? So he shouldn't be last on my list. Huh? But he should be the first one I call. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? Because no matter what the situation is, huh? he's still God say yes to God. Huh? You got to look at what the world has set up. Huh? For cancer, they got a cancer doctor. Huh? For the mind, they got a mental doctor. Huh? For financial problems, you got loan places. Huh? You got different kind of banks. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? For plumbing problems, you got a plumber. Huh? For electric problems, you got an electrician. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? But one thing about God, huh? he's an electrician. Huh? He's a plumber. Huh? He's a a cancer doctor huh? say yes to God huh? he's a one-stop shop huh? say yes to God huh? I can call on him huh? for anything huh? and he has the ability huh? to work things out huh? say yes to God huh? I can't look at huh? that I got plumbing problems huh? but I gotta look at huh? this a problem that God can handle huh? say yes to God huh? you ain't got a mental problem huh? cause God can handle it huh? And that's a fact. Say yes to God. Yes, God. But if you go on throughout the psalm, say yes to God. The more Asap communed with God, the more Asap had a relationship with him, the clearly more things begin to come to him. Say yes to God. So as we go through this life, you want a clear view. You want a clear perspective. Then we got to spend more time with God. Say yes to God. We got to spend more time in his presence. 
presence. Huh? We got to spend more time at his feet. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? While he was complaining about the world. Huh? While he was looking at the world. Huh? ASAP wasn't getting nowhere. Huh? Say yes to God. And yes, it's right to preach holiness. Huh? Yes, it's right for us to tell the truth. Huh? But we can't be focused on what the world doing. Huh? But we got to be focused on what God doing. Huh? I can't be complaining about what they doing. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? Because they already know they in sin. Huh? They already know they wrong. Huh? I can't lose sleep huh? over somebody huh? that know what they doing. Huh? It's wrong in the first place. Huh? But the more I commune with God. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? The more I see God, huh? the more I begin to come like Him. Huh? Yes, God. Huh? Say yes to Him. Uh, and when we begin to see things clearly, uh, say yes to God. Uh, that's when God revealed to him uh, the future of the sinner. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and the foolishness uh, of how he was looking at things. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, but he was able uh, to see past the world uh, and see himself. Uh, but the most important thing uh, was he was able to see the Savior. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, he was able able to see God huh, for who he really was. Huh. He realized that as a child of God huh, no matter what the wicked had, huh, no matter how they lived, huh, the most important thing that I got huh, is my relationship with God. Uh, say yes to God. Huh? He realized huh, that even in the midst of his trial huh, that he had never been alone. If you look at verse 23, uh, the Bible says uh, that nevertheless uh, I am continually with thee. Uh, thou hast holding me uh, by my right hand. Uh, oh, can I encourage the saints of God uh, that even when we couldn't see God, uh, God has been holding our hand. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, he's always been there. Uh, and you are not alone. Uh, you are alone right now. Uh, it may feel like it sometimes. Uh, but God told us uh, that he ain't going to leave. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, he made us a promise uh, that lo, he's with us. Uh, even to the end of the world. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and can I tell you uh, that a promise is a promise. Uh, and God is a God of his word huh? say yes to God uh, yes God huh? so we're never alone huh? and can I tell you something huh? that unsaved loved one huh? God is right there with him huh? the one that's in the hospital huh? God is right there with him huh? the one that needs to be delivered huh? God is right there with him huh? because he said huh? that he won't leave us huh? nor forsake us huh? say yes to God huh? and it means that even in the valley huh? even in the darkest hour huh? say yes to God huh? even in sickness huh? even in every situation huh? God is with us huh? we just had to keep our eyes huh? shade on him huh? say yes to God huh? we have the presence huh? of the Holy Ghost huh? with us always huh? say yes to God huh? he tells us huh? that he's there with us huh? so he's going to be there huh? say yes to God yes Lord huh? so we have to change huh? our perspective huh? on what we're going through huh? we got to change huh? how we look at things huh? yes Lord huh? because it's not God's will huh? that we live a life huh? in worry huh? that we live a life huh? in stress huh? that we live a life huh? where we're down God, huh? but he tells us huh? in the word of God huh? to cast our cares huh? cast our cares huh? cast our cares on him huh? because he cares for us huh? say yes to God huh? you can't overlook huh? the fact that he said huh? that he cares for us huh? say yes to God huh? there are times when you look at your family huh? feel like they don't care huh? look at your community huh? feel like like they don't care. Look at your doctor. He don't care. Your 
the boss on your job seem like they don't care but when I shift my perspective and I put my eyes on God say yes to God I'll always remember that he cares for me say yes to God so it don't matter how they feel about me I know that God he cares for me say yes to God Yes, God, but Asaph, he realizes that even though he had to go through, God was still in control. Say yes to God, because in that 24th verse, he said, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me, receive me to glory. Say yes to God. Yes, God. So he knew that God would guide him. He knew that he would lead him. And eventually heaven was going to be his home. Oh, can I encourage you today that we got the same protection. Heaven is our goal. Say yes to God. And as long as we trust him, we're going to make it. Say yes to God. Uh, we got to remember uh, that when we going through life uh, and when we facing the trials of this life, uh, God knows where we are. Uh, he knows about what we're going through. Uh, he allowed it to come our way. Uh, we got to remember that even though we in a storm, uh, the storm is still in God's hand. Uh, and he going to take us through them uh, because our problems uh, are no problem for God. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, now ASAP comes come to the conclusion uh, that God is all he needs. Uh, he forgot about the wicked. Uh, he realizes, yes, uh, they, they got it. They think they got it going on, uh, but I got God on my side. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, he had come to the point uh, where he realized that his flesh was weak, uh, but the God he served was strong. Uh, and we got to learn that a heart that desires nothing but God uh, is a heart that got everything that it needs. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, we getting caught up on getting more stuff. Uh, getting caught up on getting more popularity. Uh, getting more money. Getting more houses. Uh, getting more this. Getting more that. Uh, but we got to get to the point uh, where we want more of God say yes to God we can't be satisfied with where we are right now but we got a desire to want more of God Matthew 5 and 6 tells us that blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled say yes to God and I told you earlier uh, that the word of God uh, is the word of God. Uh, so if we hunger and thirst uh, after righteousness, uh, then we shall be filled. Uh, which lets me know uh, there's a possibility uh, that we ain't filled. Uh, Send I preach up in here. Uh, some of us come in the church, uh, but we ain't filled. Uh, some of us come into the house of God, uh, but we ain't filled. Uh, when you filled up. Uh, with righteousness, huh? when you're filled up huh? with holiness, huh? when you're filled up huh? with sanctification, huh? ain't no room for ungodliness, huh? ain't no room for wrong thinking, huh? ain't no room huh? for things that are not of God, huh? because when you're filled up, huh? there ain't no room for nothing else, huh? say yes to God. Yes, God. So when we want nothing but God, we got everything that we need. So when he gets to the place when he start looking at things from God's perspective, he says at the end of this song, for lo that they are far from the them that perish. Huh? Thou hast destroyed all them huh? that go whoring from them. Huh? But it's good for me to draw near to God. Huh? I put my trust in the Lord God huh? that I may declare all oh, thy works. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? Now he knows huh? that we had a reason to shout. Huh? Praise the Lord. Huh? Oh yes God. Huh? We've gotten to a point now huh? where ASAP huh? has overcome looking at the world. Huh? He's had a relationship Relationship with God. Uh, allow God to speak to him. Uh, and when God speaks to you, uh, when God gives you a word, uh, it ain't just for us to sit on that word, uh, but we got to respond to that word. Uh, say yes to God. 
Yes, God. If you really know that it pays to be a saint, you're going to live your life that shows that. If you really know that God is who he say he is, your response is going to be in line with what he said in his word. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. People in this room today, you may have been at a point where you felt like giving up. Say yes to God. And it's a time where we got to do like ASAP did. We got to commune with God. Say yes to God. His perspective didn't change until he talked to God. And God opened up his eyes. Say yes to God. But it all boils down to what you looking for. Say yes to God because what you look for determines what you see. Say yes to God. We talked about having expectations when we go to God. Say yes to God. We got to expect God uh, to do what he said. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, we can't be guilty uh, of looking at what's in front of us. Uh, we can't be guilty uh, of looking from a carnal perspective. Uh, we got to make it up in our minds uh, that we're going to see things uh, God's way. Uh, say yes to God. Yes, God. Uh, so growing up, I uh, I heard somebody say uh, that they was tired uh, of being sick and tired. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, you ain't tired uh, until you do something uh, to change what's going on. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and our only way out uh, is to go to God. Uh, go to God in prayer. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, we got to change uh, and shift our focus. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that we have to pray power uh, to cast down imagination. Uh, we got the power uh, to cast down every evil thought. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and the Bible tells us uh, we can think on these things uh, whatsoever's pure. Uh, yes God. Uh, whatsoever is lovely uh, a good report. Uh, so we don't have an excuse uh, to think the wrong way. Uh, we don't have an excuse uh, to look for the wrong thing. Uh, Say yes to God, but we got a reason to look for God, to do what he said in his word. If we pay attention to social media, if we pay attention to what the news is saying, if we pay attention to what the doctors say, if we pay attention to what the bankers say, say yes to God, then we always find ourselves being hindered. But if we go to the word, see God, go to God, pray and seek his faith, fast more, hunger more, take out time, see God, allow him to shift our focus, say yes to God, I don't want to leave looking at things the same way I want to see this life through the eyes of God. Say yes to God. Put your hands together and give God glory in this place. Say yes to God. 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 ASAP wasn't here when we first started the song. Say yes to God. But ASAP got to that point by the end of the song. So don't worry about where you are right now. Some of us ain't there. But we can get there. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. He can help us. He can keep us. Say yes to God. He can do it. Say yes to God. We just have to deny ourselves. Deny our desires. Say yes to God. I know it's easy to get your eyes off of him. But when we need him most, we got to stay with our focus on him. Say yes to God. Put your hands together. You can believe God that he's able. Hallelujah. Everyone's standing, everyone's mind on God. Hallelujah.